So it was a really, really amazing trip. Um, but there was something that went wrong. And I've been kind of teasing people online about this, about what went wrong. Because there was an incident where we got into a little bit of trouble. And this was kind of, this was our second to last day. And we were photographing the Hammer Tribe. And we were photographing as normal. And these two guys rock up on motorbikes. They were kind of, they weren't from the village. They were from a, a nearby village who were really friendly with the Hammer Tribe. And they rocked up very angry, really angry. And we, at this point, didn't know why. They were so upset with us. And we just kind of carried on. I'm in the middle of a setup over here. And Caleb is talking to these two guys who looked really upset. He was shouting at Caleb, kept pointing at me and, and our gear. And we were like, we just kind of got carried on. And then after like a minute, Caleb came over and went, all right, guys, you need to stop. We need to leave right now. And like, OK. Just thought we'd outstayed our welcome and thought, right, we'll pack the gear away and we'll just be on our way. We're walking back to the van and he's still shouting. He's still having an argument with Caleb, our guide, and we're wondering, what's going on? And I said to Caleb, why is he so upset? And he said, it's, it's because you're a professional and you don't have a professional permit. And I said, oh, I, I didn't realize we needed one. And he went, y you don't, they're, they're, they're making it up. I'm like, okay, so we'll just be on our way then. When we went back to our accommodation, which was only two minutes round the corner, um, we went back to, it was uh, like a bungalow in the middle of the desert. And they'd followed us back to our uh, bungalow and were still really angry and like talking to Caleb and he, they were on the phone and talking to Caleb and Caleb was talking to them and he was like, oh, I'm like, Caleb, what's wrong? And he was like, they're going to escort us to the bureau because they're not happy with what just happened. We were like, but what's the, what's the problem? And they said, they don't like the fact that you're a professional and you didn't pay a, a permit. I, th I think it's because of the softbox. Ironically, there was actually another photographer there with a Canon 1DX Mark II with a grip and a flash on top. So the system he had was a lot more expensive than what we were using, but it's because we had a softbox, I think, just made it more of a statement that, okay, you're a bit more than just an amateur. So <laughs> I was really worried, like, what are we going to? What's gonna happen now? So we're driving to the bureau and I've, on, my, on the Olympus, I've taken the trigger off, I've taken the grip off, I've put a pancake lens on and I'm trying to make my camera just look as insignificant and small as possible. And we uh, eventually pulled up. And I don't know why, I thought, because it was called the Bureau, I thought it would be a fancy, maybe a nice building. It weren't. It was a really dark little kind of shack type. <laughs> and we're walking in, they're like, what is this? Sat down. And uh, me and Alex are sat opposite each other, like, what the hell is going to happen? And the two guys that came on their motorbikes had obviously turned up and were shouting at this, this guy who was, he calls himself the head of the bureau, whether he is, not sure. I got a vibe. And uh, they were shouting, screaming, so I'm sat there, they're over my shoulder and they're like patting me on the back. Well, I say pat, they were like, more like smacking me on the back. They're like, blah, 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 blah. The only things I can make out were flash, um, photography and, um, and pay and that sort of thing. And so he's like patting me on the back. I'm like, what's gonna happen? And there was loads of arguments. This, what made it worse is because we couldn't understand what they were talking about, what they were arguing about. And Caleb was trying to more or less say that they're not professionals. They just have a lot of gear. Uh, so he, he carried on with that little thing. And in the end, I'm, uh, at this point, I'm so, nervous, upset, anxious, what's gonna happen? And uh, Alex turned to Caleb and went, Caleb, what can we do to make this right? A few more sentences were passed and he said, you have to pay. I'm like, okay, how much? 5,000 burr, which is the equivalent of $200. Now this is our second to last day, so we only had about $50 between us to last us for the rest of the, um, of the trip. And we said to, I said to Caleb, Caleb, we don't have, we don't have the money. 
can we go to a bank? Like, can we go to a hole in the wall? Shouldn't have said that. Of course there's no hole in the walls. Uh, can, we, can we go to a bank right now? They're like, the nearest bank is 45 minutes away and it's closed, so no. <laughs> like, I said to Caleb, do you have the money? He said, no, I've got no money. And I got really worried about our gear and I'm looking out of, of the door and I can see our van and I see a couple of people kind of standing around it and I was like, oh no, please don't take my hard drive that's sitting in that van because that would just be a total waste uh, of, of this trip because that would have been the, the whole trip wasted. I was like, Damn, what are we gonna do? And in the end, they said, they gave us a 24 hour grace period. They say you have 24 hours to pay to give you time to go to a bank. I was like, 24 hours to pay or what? They didn't answer. So when we left, Caleb said, let's get a drink, make sure you're okay. And I could feel I was having a panic attack because I was just really upset with what just happened. I was really nervous. And I'm everyone else is fine. Our driver, Caleb, Alex, they're all cool. They're having a beer. I'm having a Sprite. And I'm just like trying to hold back tears. I felt like I needed to run it off. I was like, I'm cool. I was like, you're all right, Tom? Yeah, I'm fine. And uh, so they followed us back to our, um, our bungalow. It wasn't like a hotel on the 12th floor. We were in a bungalow in the middle of nowhere. And they followed us back. So we didn't feel safe because we couldn't pay them there and then. There was this 24 hour grace period. So <laughs> um, the only picture I have from this whole ordeal that happened that evening was when I wedged a chair up against the door of our um, accommodation. This is the only picture I have. <laughs> like that's gonna protect from an AK-47. And uh, Alex behind the camera is like on his bed with a monopod, ready. I was like, <laughs> this, we were desperate. <laughs> so we, we didn't feel safe. I didn't sleep that night. Um, but the next day it was fine. They went, we went to a bank, we paid them and it was fine. There was a truce. Um, we were actually invited back to the village to shoot some more photos. Um, so it was fine and then we were like okay th thank god we're going home tomorrow um, but then Caleb said yeah about that I need to have a chat to you about tomorrow um, about the schedule and I said well what's the problem we're only driving home but we're, we're driving to the city because it was a, a six hour journey from the south all the way back to Addis Ababa um, to get our international flight back to London I said what's, what's the big deal we're only driving tomorrow and he went yeah, I need to make some phone calls, but I'll chat, I'll chat to you tonight. And I'm like, me and Alex are like, that's weird. So he came down eventually, he um, came to us that evening. He said, okay, right, I've had to make some phone calls. I don't know if you've read it online, but there is a massive three day protest happening in the city and all transport links have come, have, are at a standstill. No one can get in or out of the city. We are like, but we got a flight home. He was like, yeah, I know. So no cars could go in or out, no trains. I said, look, can we not chance the drive? And I'd read online, British journalists had been heavily, uh, badly injured. Stones had been thrown. Apparently, I think some, a politician had gone to prison and no one was happy about it, hence the protest. So at this point, we were checked into a slightly nicer hotel where there were other tourists and they were all panicking about the same thing, about how we're gonna get back to the city. Uh, the only way to get to the city was a domestic flight. We were like, okay, can we get a seat? And he said, there's only one pl plane that goes out per day. And it's very likely that they're all gonna be taken up already. So we rung up and they said, call back to, Every, everyone rung up and was told the same thing. Uh, uh, call back at 8.30 tomorrow morning, like a doctor's surgery, they were doing a first come first serve. So I said to Caleb, what is the chances that we're going to get on this flight? And he said, 50-50. Hmm, <laughs> At this point, I was like, oh, I just want to go home. <laughs> so um, he said, I'm quite friendly with the ticket officer. So what I'm going to do is rather than call at half eight, I'm going to physically walk into the airport and, and speak to them about it. So for about... 14 hours, I did not know if I was going to go home. And I, I messaged uh, my family and my girlfriend back home 
and they weren't pleased really that I might not be coming home because they were supposed to be picking me up and stuff. As you saw, my girlfriend and my sister picked me up at the airport. Um, I said, we really need this flight. So he left uh, about quarter past eight to go to the airport. Hope, I, I assumed we would hear within the hour if we got this flight. Then um, like quarter past nine, nothing, 10, 11. Eventually we text him saying, Caleb, man, what's going on? Are we getting this flight in a couple of hours or not? And he went, good news, you have the last three seats on the plane. Like, oh my God. But this plane, it was like, a, like an old school propeller, like Indiana Jones vibe, so you could feel everything. In fact, Alex couldn't stand up in the cabin. He's like, he got on the plane, he's like, well, this is cool. So we had the flight to, uh, to the city, and then we had a nine hour wait for our flight back to London and I think you could tell at the end of the video I was very happy at that point to come home because all of that stuff happened in the last two days I mean in hindsight I'm glad that it all happened at the end not at the start because I probably would have wanted to come straight home if that all happened but that was obviously a, a drop in the ocean I know it took a lot to explain but that was a drop in the ocean compared to the whole trip because the rest of the trip was great and it was an absolutely incredible journey though I'm not taking anything away that happened at the end, you know, you know, stuff happens, but the start of it was brilliant. I was so happy with the shots that I got. Um, and I think what I learned from it was that these trips that I do all the time, once or twice per year, it's all about stepping out of your comfort zone. And I certainly stepped out of my comfort zone with this one. But because I did that, and I was able to walk away with some cool shots, I'm so proud of this trip because I was able to step, as I say, step out of my comfort zone, do something that I'm not familiar with, go to a country or a continent I've never even been before, using a camera that I've never used before with Alex, who I'd only at that point met three times, but we got really close really quickly. So we developed a really good relationship so quickly. So kind of spontaneous in terms of the gear and the, the place I was going. I mean, I did research, but you know, planning can only take you so far. Sometimes you get, have to take a few leaps of faith with your creativity. Um, as I say, because it's so diverse and it allowed me to try new things without the worry of annoying a paying client, for example, because it was my own trip, it was my thing. Um, so that's why this was an absolutely incredible journey. And um, if you enjoyed the, uh, the travel video, then please, it's now live. So if you wanna go and share it, be the first to share it. I'm so proud of this. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. It's now, it's now live, it'll be on my Facebook in about 20 minutes, according to my schedules. But thank you ever so much for listening and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you ever so much, thank you.